Next, uh, well, we, we, we talked about the Cars and uh, their debut album coming out 40 years ago. Also, 40 years ago this month, one of the greatest pop singles of all time was recorded. The Undertones went into a studio in England on the 16th of June 1978 to cut a track called Teenage Kicks. Uh, the song had been written the previous summer by John O'Neill. It was originally released on Belfast's independent label Good Vibrations and then picked up by a little-known radio DJ called John Peel, who played it on his late-night Radio 1 show before the single received a wider release in October 1978 on Sire Records. He actually played it back-to-back. He loved it so much. Uh, surprisingly, actually, when you look back at it now, the single only got as high as number 31 in the singles charts, but still, still loved and still sounds brilliant on the radio uh, today. The Undertones guitarist Damien O'Neill remembers the recording session 40 years ago and told me more. I know, God. <laughs> feel like a grandfather or something. <laughs> By the way, I'm not a grandfather yet. Still although time. most of my friends are. <laughs> uh, is that age. But the thing is, I mean, you know, you listen to Teenage Kids, which we, of course, will shortly, but it still sounds fresh. It still sounds vibrant, it does. doesn't it? It really does. And again, I'm always amazed when I listen to it and go, wow, the guitars. See, I'm mm. a guitar player. So the guitars, I, we've, me and John, we've never, you know, he's the other guitar player, we've never, ever equaled that guitar sound in in more expensive studios after we recorded Teens Kicks. I don't know why or how or what was it about that little studio in Belfast that we managed to get those great sounds. You know? Do you remember that day? Uh, it was uh, rainy. <laughs> well, then it's always rainy in Belfast. And <laughs> it's probably always rainy in Scotland as well. Um, I do kind of, because we played a Battle of the Bands concert the night before uh, with all these other punk bands like the Outcasts and Rudy and stuff. And that went really well. We we went on a treat. And then we next day we kind of a wee bit hungover probably and we <laughs> went in the, the studio and we basically knocked out four songs really quickly and kind of did it live like we would have live you know so like we would have in a, in a pub in Derry or whatever so um, that's probably another reason why it sounds fresh it was like quick gotta get it down as quick as we can and tell me about the, the punk scene in Derry in the 1970s. I mean, we've got sort of the image in our head of what it was like, you know, the classic images of, of, sort of London and, and England and things like that. But what was it like in Derry? What was it? What was it? What was the vibe like there? Oh, it was nothing. Nothing in Derry. Um, Belfast, you had, you had, did have bands, but uh, we never really ventured to Belfast back then. It was kind of too, t- mm. <laughs> we considered too dangerous to go to Belfast. That was a kind of mindset. So for us, we were fighting our own little battle. We, right. we were the only punk band and we, Back then, you know, we did get a lot of abuse um, from people who didn't like the way we looked or the way we sounded and thought we were kind of a joke, a joke band. Um, physical attacks and things like that, honestly. Really? It was tough. Uh, it was really tough for a while. And was that when you were playing live or just going, going no, about the street? Uh, going about the street, yeah. mainly going about the street. A lot of cat calls, you know, slagging us off. And that happened all the time. Afterwards, during the Undertone's career, we were still getting loads of abuse. So why was that? <laughs> Small, narrow-mindedness, mm-hmm. uh, parochial kind of thing going on. Um, jealousy, mm-hmm. a lot of jealousy. I mean, it's not just... I'm sure that happened to a lot of bands in, in small provincial towns as well. It's not just us, you know. Well, of course, the, the lovely way to stick two fingers up, if you like, to these individuals yep. is, is by getting success. Exactly. Which, which came with Teenage Kicks. And and I think it's it's safe to say, you know, you think, obviously, Teenage Kicks, it's yourself, but iconically with, with uh, association with that, that song is, is John Peel. Yes. He played a massive part, didn't he? Totally. I mean, I wouldn't be talking to you now if it wasn't for, for John, you know. Yeah, he championed that song. Not only championed it, he said, you know, he's famously said it's a favourite song ever. That is a mighty, mighty record, you know. And come the end of the year, that'll be battling with Suspect Device and Shop by Both Sides as my record of the year, I think. Those are the undertones on Good Vibrations records. You know, he just fell in love with it, played it, and played it twice in a row for the first time when he first... He did, played, didn't he? Yeah, he could have played it straight away. He played it I again. know. Can you imagine? We were all listening that night, right? Because we had a, I think we had an inkling that he was going to play it, and then he played it again. We <laughs> don't find it. We were just euphoric, and I wish um, my my greatest regret is not having a like. I used to tape a little tape recorder. I wish I taped that that moment, that, that conversation, that moment. And you would have heard us whipping and yelping and the phone <laughs> ringing and all that. It would have been amazing. I'll tell you what, you know, I've not done this for ages, but I think we ought to hear that again. Hold on a second, just talk among yourselves. Listen this to, when you listen to it this time, those of you who are familiar with the work of Loudon Wainwright, uh, last time I played it, the pig said, a lead singer sounds like Loudon Wainwright at times. It may sound a bit fanciful, but listen to it again and see what you think. An excuse for playing it twice. 
tell us about what, what's happening now because the undertones still tour. You still yes. you still go out there. But before let, let's clear what what happened with with Fergal. Why did Fergal just sort of stay away and never come back? Well, okay, we split in '83. Fergal back then left. Really, want, he was the one I wanted to leave, and we kind of. It was, things weren't going well anyway so we all agreed and it was kind of relief but he wanted a successful solo career and he did have a bit of that as well he was more ambitious basically is what I'm trying to say and then we kind of parted ways you know he went his way and we we went our way and we all the four of us kind of always stayed friends and, and me and my brother John were actually were in another band together that Petrol Motion after the other yeah, of course yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, it was. We kind of drifted apart. So when we did get a chance to reform back in nineteen ninety nine, we we didn't even ask Fergal because we knew he wouldn't be. He just wouldn't be interested. Mm. Maybe it's because he didn't write the songs. You know, maybe he's not. It's not as precious to him as to us. You know. So it's yeah, it's the way it is. You know, we all part company, and that's it. So the undertones still exist. And tell me about Damien O'Neill and the monotones. Yes, I've just released the solo album under the guys Damien O'Neill and the Monotones. Um, yeah, it was on my own label, Dimple Disc. It's it's basically I revisit some old songs from uh, Undertones, like I do the Love Parade, which is a single uh-huh. I put out in 80, 81, 82. I've also done a few of that Petrol Motion songs, redone those, and there's instrumentals and new songs as well. So yeah, I'm still still at it, doing stuff. Oh, great stuff. And long may you continue. Cheers, thanks.